Good evening and welcome to Wolf Tracks. Tonight, get the scoop on some of South Kitsap's top vocal musicians. Also, take a glance at some of the mysterious doors at SK. We also have the news on the new school situation. All this and more on Wolf Tracks. Hello and welcome to Wolf Tracks. I'm Kevin O'Brien and this is my co-host, Heather Grantier, the camera operator. Heather, where's Steve? I can't find him anywhere. What do you mean you can't find him anywhere? He's supposed to be helping me host. He's supposed to be here. So what are you saying? We should host the show and look for Steve at the same time? Yeah, that's a really good idea. Uh, what? Uh... Hi, I'm Kevin O'Brien and welcome to Wolf Tracks. Do you like movies? I know I like movies and Steve likes movies too. So why don't you check out this next section on our Wolf Tracks movie review while we look for Steve. Steve! Steve! Welcome to Wolf Tracks Movie Reviews. We're here to educate the public about little known or forgotten films. I'm Tom, and this is my co-host Justin. What's up? Sometimes when a movie gets up there in years, studios decide to revisit old hits, and then you have a remake. But some people don't even know that the original movies even exist. We asked the staff and students of SK whether they'd seen the remakes or originals of various films. Here's what they had to say. Yes, I saw the remake of Ocean's Eleven. I, uh, I seen the original and the remake of Planet of the Apes. I have seen the original Psycho and the remake. I have seen both the remake of Planet of the Apes and Psycho. Well, it seems most people have seen the remakes of certain movies, but we're going to take a look at some of the originals. Our first movie today is The Planet of the Apes, which was remade and re-released in the summer of 2001. Planet of the Apes was remade by Tim Burton and released in the summer of 2001 to a huge box office take. The original was released in the 1960s and was also a huge hit. Charlton Heston stars as an astronaut marooned on a planet overrun by talking apes. Well, I thought that the original Planet of the Apes was a good movie for its time. Uh, Charlton Heston did a really good job in it, and it's really a classic. It had really great makeup effects, but something about the remake just, it just got me, and it's just, I find it a better film, and... It, it, the ending was really good compared to the original. Well, hey, different strokes for different folks, as I always say. But I have to say that, that the, the new Planet of the Apes just failed in comparison to the original. Charlton Heston played a much better uh, astronaut character, you know. And sure, the special effects were great in the new one, but I mean, for the time that the original Planet of the Apes was made, it was, it was just a marvel of its time. I would go ahead and I would recommend the remake. Original. Our second film on the list is the classic Alfred Hitchcock thriller. Psycho. This 1960s horror classic has been called by me one of the scariest movies of all time. It was remade oh, shot for shot know. by a director, she Gus Van Sant. It was a horrible box office failure, and it fell short of the original's frightening reputation. You know, personally, I thought the new one was horrible. It was just a mockery of Alfred Hitchcock, you know? I mean, Vince Vaughn is not a very good crazy person. Yeah, I also really despise the new one. I thought that uh, Alfred Hitchcock did a much better job than Gus Van Sant, and Vince Vaughn has, he is nowhere near as creepy as Anthony Perkins was. So I would go ahead and I would suggest the original Psycho as opposed to the remake. And besides that, Anne Heche. Who wants to see Anne Heche, man? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Dude. Anne Heche in a shower? Janet Lee. Janet Lee. That Janet Lee is my pick, that's what I say. So go rent all the Janet Lee movies you can find. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Our final movie today is the Rat Pack classic, Ocean's Eleven. This 1960s crime classic starred the Rat Pack, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. It was remade in 2001, starring the likes of George Clooney, Brad Pitt, and Julia Roberts. That's a good idea, big boy. <laughs> Out of the remake and the original, I preferred the original Ocean's Eleven. Uh, the cast for the remake was, was really superb, had a great cast, but the original had Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, and you really can't top that with anybody these days, even Marlon Brando. It's just, not, you can't capture the same magic that they had with the original Ocean's Eleven. No, I, I completely agree with you on that. I mean, it's just like with Frank Sinatra and, you know, and uh, Sammy Davis Jr., it's just like, with the Rat Pack, we're going to bust them heads, you know? 
It's, it's just them. You can't remake it with George Clooney, Matt Damon, and Brad Pitt. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't work at all. Julia Roberts was great, though. I agree. Julia Roberts is great. Julia Roberts. Call me sometime. Go rent all the Julia Roberts movies you can rent. <laughs> Go rent all the Julia Roberts movies you can rent. So Pretty Woman. I would, I would recommend the original Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, I would, too. It's good. Well, that's all for this installment of our show. Join us next time when we'll be reviewing some of the best movies ever made. We'll see you at the movies. And I'll see you at the snack bar. Mark Wahlberg, I'm after you. Oh, where's Steve? How am I supposed to do this? Without Steve, this isn't going to work. I don't know any of Steve's lines. You'll just have to do your best. Um, improvise. You're good at that. Imp improvise. Great. So, Steve. Have you heard about Brigadoon and all their great music? Why, no, Kevin. What about it? Well, it just so happens that Brigadoon is some of SK's top musicians and some of the best music I've ever heard. Really? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so check out this story on some of SK's top musicians involved in Brigadoon. South Kitsap Musical Department is outstanding this year, and we thought we should get to know some of the top vocalists. Hello, my name is Marty, and I'm here at South Kitsap High School to let you get more acquainted with two of the elite vocal musicians we have here at South Kitsap. I have recently received the pleasure of speaking with both of these individuals. My name is Chelsea Ferguson. I'm a senior here at South. I've been singing ever since fifth grade, so. My name is Garrett Guidon. Uh, I'm a junior. Uh, I've been singing for about nine months. Um, what I'm interested in singing is I, I like to express myself different ways through music and I think that it's a really fun thing to do and I just have done it for so long. So, yeah. I've taken voice lessons for four years from Joy Dunning. Um, I love singing for the school. I love feeling like I'm contributing to the school. I, um, I just, I love it. I love performing and I do the best I can at it, and um, I try and work really hard. Um, and it's just an incredible feeling when you know people are like, "Wow, you know that they can sing," or you know, or something. And it's just, it's fun. It's What got me interested in singing was just seeing different musicals and seeing how fun it could be. I am taking voice lessons right now with Joy Dunning, and um, I've been taking lessons from her since last April. The best part of performing is just, I don't know, there's, there's not something that's the best part about performing. All in all, performing is just fun. Getting up in front of people and being a completely different person than you are and just having a good time with people that you know and it's just all around fun. Okay. Mr. Allen is the music director here at SK. My opinion on Garrett. Garrett is a great vocalist. He's a hard worker and uh, probably can do just about any style of music. Does Obviously does the musical and um, he's in the chamber choir and he was in the Madrigal Feast and he's just pretty talented. Um, Chelsea is uh, Doing, she's in the highlighters group this year, and so she's doing a little bit of stuff with, uh, with the jazz thing that she hasn't done before, and she's obviously involved in the musical and things too. Um, she works really hard and has really improved her voice as a soloist. Um, just a hardworking kid. Great. They're both uh, leaders, in, leaders in their uh, respective groups and um, do great work. My, my future plans in singing is I'm going to continue singing through college and um, do some plays and just try and, you know, be successful through that. But I think what I eventually want to do is own my own recording studio and be kind of like a talent scout. And I don't want to make a career out of singing. I think it's just a fun thing to be able to do and a fun thing to be able to fall back on, I guess. I plan on being a music teacher, so that'll help. Um, being able to sing will help with that. And then if I ever decided to do musicals for fun, do some shows, I think that's probably about it. Chelsea and Garrett are both wonderful and kind people. It's a pleasure working with them. Hopefully you've seen them, or will see them, in the school play, Brigadoon. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Steve Robinson, and right now I'm supposed to be introducing our next hat story, but since I can't find Kevin, no, you're not Kevin, get out of here. Okay, since I can't find Kevin, why don't you people relax, sit back, and watch this uh, story on SK Hat Culture while I look for him. Hats. They're everywhere, and in all types, too. They range from big to small, bright or dull, normal or unique. But who you are and your personality could greatly depend on the type of hat you wear. So the question is, what is your favorite hat? Favorite hat to wear would have to be uh, like a, I got a green beanie because it keeps my head warm. Do you remember those pictures of your parents from when they were in school or your great great grandparents' weddings? <laughs> Look at the hats, they changed so much. So what hat style from the past stands out to you? Fedoras. Fedoras have to be the coolest hats ever. I mean, if you have a fedora, you're instantly cool. The hats that stand out the most to me are those reggae hats. I think, are those old safari hats, you know? Because my dad has one. <laughs> when he works out in the garden, he looks like he's on safari. It's cool. It seems like people get a hat to serve a purpose, whether it be a bad hair day or their head is cold. But either way, they still like their hat to look good. Well, I'm still on the search for Kevin right now. And as you can see, the hallways of South are a bit crowded. Come on, Kevin. And speaking of crowded hallways, why don't you watch this next story on our new school situation? Here we are at the overcrowded South Kitsap High School. Yes, we're crowded, and yes, we deal with it. But no, we don't like it. Some will bump, some will fall, but most try to make their way through this tangled maze of bodies. The state takes a look at your total square footage in your building. So in our case, we're looking at the swimming pool, the hallway, all the storage areas, the gym, the foyer, the commons, and they take a look at that and they say, this is your square footage, and for the number of kids that you have, you should be able to get X amount in your school. This is what it looks like when you jam 2,600 students into a school designed for 1,800. But what choice do we have? so crowded that sometimes I've had to take like baby steps in order to get somewhere and I've seen people get pushed through walls. It's like crazy walk around the halls. There's so many people in the school like you get shoved in the walls and if you're not careful. I would actually really support having a new school um, but there's people in this community that won't. A lot of the elderly people have had kids go through the school district already so they feel that there's no reason to pay to have another school um, and that's how my grandma feels. So, um, but I think there needs to be another school because it will help with our education. Many would agree that we could use a new high school, and many would agree that our community wouldn't support one. We would need money from the state, and it doesn't look like that will happen without dramatic changes. Classes would have to be added to the two gyms, auditorium, commons, and the already overcrowded classrooms. Another way to help the overcrowded school would be to adding portal walls. Last year we added two new portal walls. The only problem would be is where are we going to put them? Portal walls are only a band-aid to this open wound. If we were to build a second high school without funds from the state, the community would have to pay for it all. An outstanding $28 million covers the cost, and without funds from the state, that would be a lot of money for our community. So those are the facts and figures about a new high school proposal. Now it's up to you to decide if we need a new one. You know, I've never actually sewn before. It's kind of relaxing. Especially when your co-host doesn't show up. Right. So while you guys are enjoying this next story on our sewing class, so part of the PTE program here at South, I'm going to continue looking for my missing co-host. Wouldn't it be nice to design your own clothes? Create your own fashion, designer slacks, or even a handbag? Well, it's all possible, and students here at SK are taking the steps to accomplish these tasks. 
The sewing classes here at SK offer a variety of sewing skills that students learn. Students have certain required projects and samples that they have to do. They have to learn how to run a machine, uh, how to sew straight, how to use the pedal to make it go and stop, how patterns work, uh, how our bodies curve so that things fit. In order to learn these skills, the students are assigned projects such as a uh, tote bag and a pillow and boxers and an apron and then a fifth project of our choice. After learning the basics of sewing, the students move on to more complex projects that use patterns. These patterns create the base of the project. The patterns tell the students how much of the materials are needed. The patterns also tell you where to sew at, where to put the seams, and even what type of stitch you need, which there's so many of them. There's a straight stitch, there's front stitching, zigzag, back stitching, basting. Sewing a simple tote bag seems to entail a lot of work, yet the students here in class seem to think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, um, it's one of those classes that you get to go and do your own thing, not worry about the teacher, which is more like, I don't know, makes you feel grown up. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really fun, even though I hate the fact that everybody's like, oh, she's getting domestic. <laughs> it's terrible, but it's a lot of fun. You can also save a little bit of money and or shopping time if you sell your own clothes. Um, most cases it is cheaper, like it would cost me about 15, 20 bucks to buy a dress like this, but I'm making it for like 10. <laughs> Overall, the sewing classes here at SK can teach the students some basic abilities in sewing, giving them an opportunity to create designs of their very own. Kevin! Kevin! Ooh. Kevin! I know you're in there. All right, here we go. Kevin! Oh, Kevin, I don't know none of your lines, man. I need some help here. I know you're in there. Aw, oh, man, never mind. Forget this. Kevin! Kevin! I don't even know where this door goes. Kevin! Well, speaking of mysterious doors, why don't you watch this story on mysterious doors around SK? Kevin! Kevin! We've all seen them. And the same question goes through our heads. Where does that door go? Well, we here at Wolf Tracks decided to answer that Im imposing question. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the unmarked doors of South Kitsap High. We started our investigation by talking to some students around the school. We asked them what they thought was behind some of the doors. Some secret teacher's lounge where they have like pool tables and ping pong and stuff like that. Oh, maybe like they kept the boat or something. I don't know. I was kind of thinking either, that's either where Mr. Colombini takes the real bad kids and locks them up in there for a little while. They're hiding something. Maybe mops? Broom. Laundry detergent. The stuff that they clean the floors with. But worse. Orange glow, the all-purpose cleaner that can get out anything. Well, the students weren't much help, so we went down to talk to Mr. Dias in maintenance, who had his assistant, Mr. Coppinger, take us around and open some doors for us. What do you say we check out our first door? This door is located in the science end of the building. See what's inside. Ooh, science storage. So here we are down in the SKHS shop area where we found another large unmarked door. Let's see what's behind it. Well, it appears to be just SKHS maintenance staff hard at work on fixing yet another project. Next we headed down to the weight room, so follow us as we enter these large double doors in the back. The steam goes in this tank, heats the water, and it goes over to the boys' shower, the girls' shower, and also the laundry room. Yeah. So we checked around and found out that this is the video production studio. 
We got an inside tip and found out they're filming the next section of wool tracks, so let's come in and take a look. Ben, shouldn't you be doing something productive? This is productive! What are you guys doing in here? Mind your own business! Come on. Get out of here! Come on. What a slacker! And now you'll hear from the man who's been behind our last door more than anyone, our video instructor, Mr. Down. The store right back here leads up to the roof. Uh, when we're taping uh, football games, we have to haul all of our cameras and microphones up to the roof. Uh, the press box is also up there, so you get a nice view of the field, uh, sort of as a sideline. It's kind of a running joke uh, amongst the upperclassmen. They like to tell the sophomores that there's a swimming pool up on the roof. Uh, there's no swimming pool on the roof. That's, that's just it. Hi, Kevin. All right. I can't believe it's almost the end of the show and we still haven't found Steve. He's worse than a little kid. Speaking of little kids, you still have to introduce the Mullen Extra Gel Elementary School Grandparents' Day story? Oh, right. Grandparents' Day. Uh, oh, why don't you check out this story on Mullen X Ridge's recent Grandparents' Day while we still look for Steve. Jeez. On February 14th, Valentine's Day, Mullinex Ridge Elementary School opened its doors for grandparents and special friends. It was a special visit where they could visit their kids and see how they were doing at school. We got the chance to sit in Mrs. Flynn's third and fourth grade split class to join in the festivities. The students read stories, interviewed their grandparents about school in the past, and played hot cross buns for them on the recorder. Uh, Grandparents' Day here at Mullinex Ridge has always been a tradition that we love and cherish because we get to see some more of the family of our students. Students really enjoy Grandparents' Day because they get to show their writing and their reading and many of their other skills. They get to go around the classroom and show um, artwork that they've done and different projects they've created. So it's a great linking opportunity between the younger kids and their grandparents. It's a moment we treasure and look forward to do every year. As the day went on, there were lots of smiles. The kids loved seeing their grandparents, and the grandparents loved seeing their kids. Oh, to be with the grandkids and uh, see how they're doing. I've been through this school with one, two, three, four, five grandkids. Well, she was very excited that we were going to come in and have grandparents stay with her and get to see her classroom. Oh, it's great fun. It's great fun to see the kids. It's wonderful to actually have lunch with them. Grandparents um, Day is a special day here at Mullinex Ridge that students get to bring either grandparents or senior friends. Uh, what I like about it the best is that it, it's a great opportunity for the students to share their school with their, with, with their grandparent or someone that's very special to them and gives them a chance to show them around and let them, they also participate in a, in most cases they participate in an activity in the classroom. Some of them are reading books to the students, some of them are sharing some of their life experiences with the students, so it gives them a chance for, gives the students a chance to hear their grandparents share information and join in with them in learning. So it's a great day and uh, today's Valentine's Day, so it's also a, an extra special day because we're celebrating Valentine's Day as well. A lot of time and work went into this event, and thanks to the PTA, it was a great success. We started this because we felt like it was really important to get our grandparents into the building, and they're interested in what their grandchildren are doing at school, and the kids really enjoy it, and so that's what prompted it. And it's a collaborative effort between the staff and the PTA and I've just been involved because I really enjoy it and, and I think it's an important thing to do. Overall, the day was a lot of fun for everyone, and what better day to share it than Valentine's Day. Yes. Oh, searching for my co-host has uh, really made me hungry, so I'm gonna take a break. You guys watch these important announcements, all right?
So we're just about at the end of the show, and we still can't find Steve. What? Where could he be? Yeah, you got it. Where are those guys? Come on. We've looked all over for him. Where could he be? Oh, hey, hey Steve. Um, guys? Where, where have you been? Wait, where have I been? Yes, where have you been? Where have you been? I've been out looking for you. I've had to do all your segments, all your lines. You're the worst co-host I've ever no, had. No, no, from the start, you were the co-host. No, you're the co-host. You're we the co-host. No, no, no. You're the co-host. No, you're the co-host. You're the co-host. Co 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 we still have to introduce the last story? Now that we have only one segment, why don't you check out this story on some of SK's top vocalists at a recent competition? Get out of here, man. As a preparation for the solo and ensemble competition that is being held Saturday, February 24th at Olympic College, solos performed in front of a live audience at United Methodist Church on Kidsap Street. Let's hear from voice lesson teacher Joy Dunning to see what this event is all about. My name is Joy Dunning and I'm a private vocal instructor. There's a rating system that happens. Um, the judge is brought in very often from uh, a college uh, professorship. Their grading is from one Roman numeral one through four, one being superior. And I try to pick the songs that are appropriate for that particular voice. They have to practice because what I call miracle mentality does not work. Uh, you can't put the music under your pillow and wake up the next morning with it memorized. It just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm going to do okay. I'm looking to try and get a one, but you know, you can never tell. My name is Katie Hood and I'm singing Conjo d'Aspetto by Handel. Oh. My name is Garrick O'Don and I'm going to be singing Viva Leo Pan La Casa by the music. Hello, my name is Katie Olson, and I'm singing Too Low Sigh. It might as well um, get the jitters out in front of people who care about me. All in all, the event was a success in preparing these youths for the competition. I'd like to wish you all good luck at OC. Well, that's it for Wolf Tracks. I'm your host, Kevin O'Brien. No, I'm your host, Steve Robinson. No, nope. we established this earlier. I was on camera first, so I'm the host. No, 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 no. I'm the host because I'm better looking. No, you I'm guys. the host because... Just finish the show, please. No problem. Sorry. Well, that's it for Wolf Tracks. We'll all see you next time. Good night. I'm gonna be on TV. <laughs> we all gonna be on TV. <laughs> I just sit there and... Yeah. <laughs> Kevin! Kevin! Yes? <laughs> Kevin! Where are you, Kevin? Where are you? Are you recording? Kevin! Come on, man. What's good in there? Come on, man. I don't know your lines. Kevin! Uh, Kevin? Kevin. 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 Kevin O'Brien. <laughs> oh my camera. <laughs> Ow! I'm still on a search for Kevin right now, and as you can see... No one's paying attention. No one's paying attention right now, as you can see. Our actors are just standing there, and they're supposed to be bumping me around, you know.